Welcome back to Bunter's Yard, and today we are weathering this um, Janus Shunter from Oxford Rail um, or Golden Valley. Um, I think someone licenses someone else to make it, but um, anyway, it comes in an Oxford Rail box, I think. So um, they're a bit flimsy these uh, these rails, but I mean, it's just because it's fine detail. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. They are just uh, they they're quite flexible. Um, so just be very careful with uh, with these details on here especially with some of the techniques we're going to be doing today but um i think it's a nice model i used to live close to where these used to run uh in the real world um so we're going to start by just fading the paint down a little bit now these um if we look at these online um any reference pictures they are really really filthy and grotty apart from the ones that are restored but anyone that's been worked on um really really messy so um kind of going to go a little bit in between today i'm not going to go too mad but um being a dark color we need to uh we need to maybe change the techniques just a little bit so we we can see uh, you know some of the effects so first thing we do is whether the blue paint work has been sitting out obviously for years and it wouldn't be this lovely bright uh, pristine blue anymore so we're using just oil paints. I've just thinned this down a little bit uh, with some uh, odorless thinners. And we're going to use uh, this is a dry brush. Now this needs to remain dry all the way through. If you get it wet, then uh, you need to put it to one side and try another brush that is dry. And we need to rub this in um, until, um, until those marks go, basically. It takes a few little goes. Uh, because um, this this is drying really quickly today. This uh, the way it's been thinned, I think is probably my my issue. But anyway, you can see there. So it's starting to now sort of blend in. And we don't want any sort of any obvious mark. Not at the moment, anyway. We might reintroduce those in a little bit. We're just going to rub the oil, the uh, white oil paint in as uh, as best we can, and it will leave. You can see this sort of faded. Um, sun bleached sort of dusty appearance now, we've done this before on others on the um on the class 20 when we we did the reverse and we added uh, black oils and we made the paintwork go darker um because we want to change the color very slightly but this is the opposite of that so we're using this is white but you can use um you know a light sort of beigey color magnolia or whatever the oil would be called um but yeah, white works well for this one. So you can see it's um, given that sun faded effect. The alternative to this obviously would be to repaint it in a different um, shade, which obviously isn't um, isn't viable. We don't want to repaint anything. It's just a nightmare. So we can do this quite easily with a brush. So I need to dab on just a tiny amount. Put an extra on the top just to line it up just a little bit more and just blend it in until uh until you get the kind of effect that you're after and if you put on too much you can clean it off just use some thinners on another brush don't use the dry brush um put some thinners on the brush and then you can wipe it all off and uh, start again or if it's not enough you want to put some more in a particular area then just add another dab in and then brush it in and then any sort of marks like this they're not going to come off we can use a dampened uh, a brush with just just with a bit of thinners and we'll, we can just wipe it back a little bit just make it a little bit wet and then we can blend it the good thing is with the um, this sort of um, fading of paintwork it's not going to be uniform so if you've got patches it really doesn't um, really doesn't matter it all adds to the effect if you look at paintwork that's uh, that's faded on um, you know, not just trains but on cars especially you'll see that the patches have gone um, to all, um, it, it's not uniform so once you've done your panels now I'll just I'll just do this uh, the roof panel just to show you um, like I say you, you will notice it's blotchy on on uh, some some um, areas so we're just going to, we've got um, this stiff brush with um, just dampening thinners, 
really, really tiny, a tiny amount. And we'll just dab that around. Or you can use a sponge, um, but it must be really, really almost dry, but just a little bit thinner. And you can, you can see there's sort of patches starting to appear because the paint won't always, like I say, fade uniformly. You will end up with these patches and blotches. So you can experiment with this and different, um, use different things, like I say different brushes and uh, scroll, uh, screwed up paper and um, obviously natural sponge and makeup sponges are quite good to use as well. So we need to continue with this. Now it's quite a process, but it's quite, um, it's quite nice and therapeutic. Um, you can just sit there in front of the TV with this on your lap, to be honest, and uh, and uh, go all around it if that's what the uh, the family would allow you to do. Probably wouldn't condone that, to be honest with you. Just lock yourself in your in your man cave, and uh, and just get your head down, really. So nice, a big soft brush, in it as much as you can. It's quite tricky with these, uh, all these handrails, and uh, there's quite a lot of detail on this. So uh, do be careful uh, with your brush because, um, well, I'm probably going to break something. I'm almost certain of that. I'm not going to show you all of this. We'll do a little bit more, um, but then you can uh, you can sort of work the rest out yourself. Um, this will just be the same for every panel. You can do as much as you like. You don't need to go all the way down to the bottom. We're going to add some different effects and different colours a bit later on anyway. So um, so especially at the bottom, it's going to be a bit darker and uh, greasy and grimy. So um, probably uh, I'm not going to worry about going all the way down to the bottom. And those. Uh, little uh, sort of bonnet things on the top. I'm not going to do all of those as well. We're going to leave a little bit of that, a patch of that in the middle as a slightly different colour. And you don't need to do all the panels. You know, if the uh, if the shunters had a replacement door or something, then you may just want to leave that um, in whatever colour it's is in. You can see that's dried up just a little bit too quickly, so we'll just uh, dampen it a little tiny bit with thinners and then we'll give it another go. So once you've done the, the whole thing, um, you can see the difference between one side and the other. So I think it's quite a nice effect. Um, we can add more sort of blotches and, and runs. So I think we'll do uh, some little runs on this uh, on this side panel. So just a little bit thinner, just to start it going. And then we'll get a brush and we'll uh, we'll we'll drag downwards. Um, just try and keep all the all the runs you know from top to bottom the way that they would naturally run in real life with the rain and so on so our next uh, stage is to add some um, oily greasy sooty marks and we're going to do these with black oils again um, rather than using um, uh, airbrush I'm going to paint these in exactly the same. Uh, I'm not using this thinned. This is just going to be straight from the tube, uh, and you just need to dab it on. It's probably a little bit too much there, but we can deal with that in a moment. And we're just going to have these greasy marks. And if you look at these on um, sort of reference pictures online, they are sort of heavily, heavily greased, and um, 
and uh, really, really neglected. Uh, and so this is just what we're going to try and simulate here. So this is out of grease, um, an oil run from uh, from around that engine panel, and it's over the time it's crept along the floor and around the side. I don't forget oils don't um, don't dry that quickly, so we can manipulate this um, for uh, you know for, for quite some time. It probably won't be set for a or dried for another day so uh, with lots and lots of time so take your time no rush and uh, just get it to how you want it to look so we're going to add some more oil and grease down in the bottom here now if we do uh, sort of downward strokes I, I tend to push down towards the bottom of the panel then you'll get a sort of build up um, of the oil and the grease at the bottom of the panel so it looks like it's just naturally run down and that's where it's settled along the bottom there I'm just going to add a bit in just to make sure that that's the effect that we're going to get. That's what I like. And that patch on the side probably hasn't faded out as I wanted it to, so we'll uh, we'll just deal with that now. So just a little bit thinner on there, and then we can blend it in further. And it still needs to be quite dark, you know, along that edge. So we're just going to add a little bit more in there again. It gives us a bit more of a fade. Once the oil dries, that will look a little bit differently. So again, we need to do this to every uh, every panel where you think there's going to be grease and oil and grime and soot, um, which on this uh, little Janus is probably most of them so we're going to do quite a bit I'll show you a few bits and uh, and then we'll, we'll skip ahead at some point so along these inspection panels there's going to be um, grease and oil and uh, and soot which is uh, sort of spilled out it's not going to be cleaned off and then down there by these um, they look like filler caps. I don't know if they're used for oil or fuel, I'm not sure. I'm assuming they're kind of for fuel. So we'll uh, we'll add some down there as well by those things and we'll, uh, we'll do some extras to that in a little bit. And all the yellow is gonna be um, almost gone really. So we're, we're gonna make it quite dark, but it's obviously, uh, you will be able to see the wasp stripes on there still. Notice that that hand row on the left is uh, is now broken. Um, so we have to glue that back in place a bit later on. But uh, they are quite delicate. Um, unfortunately, it's it's something you'd expect on lots of models that are, um, you know, fine detail um, pipe work and uh, hand rails. Are unfortunately, going to um, from time to time become a victim. So, but anyway, we can uh, we can repair that and we'll. Um, We'll super glue that back in place in a little bit. So on these uh, top um, covers, I'm just going to add um, some greasy marks around the edge. I'm not going to do the whole of the panel. So whether it's um, you know sooty exhaust or oily exhaust has come around the edge of the panel, I don't know, or just um, some dirty finger marks, whatever's caused that. But that's that's kind of effect that I wanted, and then some sort of exhausty type soot there as well and then around these grills at the front and the back so 
this just gives us a start this just it because a nice sort of a uh, soft um, blend and a gradient sometimes even with airbrushes you can get like um, you know a line um, where it's just not gone on you know gradually enough so this is quite nice and then we can beef it up with the airbrush a little bit later on and make it look a bit um, sort of add the darker parts in so the, the soot on the on the vents and so on So these would be these would be exhaust, I guess, at the top. Uh, it's quite a nice little detail on these. These are added in extra. These are glued on at the end. I think they're not part of the mould, so they look quite nice. Nice little feature. And they would be um, if they're in exhaust, they're going to have um, soot around the top. So we just add that in. Now the front and the back, the buffer beam. These are going to take some uh, real. Uh, abuse um, so we're going to cover these in uh, in the oils we'll give it make a start on this it's going to take a few different uh, bits and pieces to make these look you know as, as bad as they would in real life but we just add in some uh, some of the black oil blend it in the same as before that's going to help bring out the detail of those uh, those rivets or, or bolts or whatever they they are bit of a funny angle for me to um, to do this I'm I'm off to the left I sort of twisted my body and, uh, and my hands and everything just so I can get a, a decent uh, camera angle so uh, it may look a little bit awkward but um, hopefully you, you can get to see what I'm doing there so I need to blend that back as much as we can And again, if we just use the dampened brush with some oils, we can add in some streaks. So we use a, a, the stiffer brush, and we can just brush down, and that'll add in some uh, some some streaky marks for us. So onto our airbrushing now and putting on our sort of sleeper grime colours. Now the colour of choice today is chocolate brown, which is a um, a model colour from Vallejo. So we need to mix this down with thinners and I mix it fairly thin because I don't just want to cover everything. Um, although it's going to be pretty grotty down there, we still wanted some of the colours to show through. I'm um, going a little bit gingerly around the around the wheels, didn't want to get too much overspray on the wheels um, it is without taking the, the model apart um, they can be a bit tricky to clean so um, I'm just being a bit careful now the mud is going to spray from below so it makes sense really to, to spray from below I guess so we just turn it on its side 
so we get a bit of access. Now those sandboxes, you need to make sure you get all around those. Um, it's so easy just to get sort of sidetracked and only paint from one angle. And then uh, once you finish, you realize that the side of those air boxes, those sandboxes are, uh, are still the original black um, from when the model came in. So some of that um, mud and sleeper grime would uh, would extend oops, just up the uh, up the top of that um, sort of walkway. So we just had a bit more in there as well. Tiny touch to the uh, to the top areas. They're not going to escape all this um, all this mud and grime either. It's going to be airborne and it's going to settle everywhere. And we've got our pressure fairly low on the airbrush, so we can get these. Um, so we can control some of these these lines and streaks. So on the front, so just going to cover the the grill. Make sure everything gets on the front. We will we'll, we'll do something with the vent the, with the grills in a moment. We'll, we'll add a different colour on there. And then down the bottom now, the the absolute sort of bottom line of this is going to get the, the you know the brunt of the mud. There's going to be lots and lots down the bottom, so uh, we can we can go as as thick as we like along the bottom there. And that's what happens when you touch it when the paint is still wet, so I uh, wasn't being particularly careful there. Tricky find a way to, to hold these. Um, that's not going to leave a leave a mark. So uh, yeah, I, I normally use the um, the couplings if I can. So we've changed our brush now and we've added in a model layer black. And I'm just going to paint in the um, the grills on the front. The only problem is that we've got that. Um, is the handrail in the way so we need to kind of paint through that without leaving a, a silhouette of that um, on the on the grill um, so you need to attack that from a, a couple of different angles I'm gonna add just a little bit of soot into these um, these vents here just to sort of highlight those we've got the sooty runs from the oil washes earlier on And then just a little bit extra on the top. And I just like to uh, to add on um, on the leading edge of the roof. Uh, I do this with most wagons as well. Just just run along with the dark colour, whatever it is. So you're using, using a soot or a smoke or a um, dark grey, whatever colour you're choosing. Just to add that on because the, the leading edge is going to get uh, a build up of, of um, soot and grime so I'm just trying to add that in but just really really lightly not too thick and again this grill that's going to be uh, having a build up um, but just needs to make sure we get through that handrail on the front there And then still with the black, so we're going to add some black into these um, these filler cap types of things. So I'm still 
on the assumption that they have uh, diesel or oil, so they're going to have runs. So just a little bit of weathering powder, not um, too much on this one. Um, I'm just using this uh, rust from the from MIG and Humble Dark Earth, and you can see lots of different shades in there. And that's because I just normally uh, would just leave it in there once I finished, and then um, the, the the colors become more subtle. I've got more choice of colors, so I'm using a smaller brush than normal here. And I'm being really, really careful. Um, just don't want to get too much rust on this. Although, um, you know, they're 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 pretty pretty grotty. Um, I just didn't want I just didn't want too much rust on this. I think more more grease and grime rather than rust on this one. But there will be a couple of little runs, a couple of areas where there will be rust. Some of these uh, leading edges along the chassis and so on. There's going to be a little bit of rust there. And then perhaps where the uh, the rails um, join, that's going to be a weak point. It's going to get water in there, and they're going to rust. So that's my theory on this. And then if we use uh, the weathering powders, so on the wheels, They're quite lucky with these wheels. There's a little bit of movement in these wheels and we can just um, move them enough just so that we can get paint and powders underneath those coupling rods. So um, I was quite fortunate there's a bit of play in these. Not always the same. Sometimes you have to take them off, which would be a bit tricky with these because there are not screws in there. They're these little bolts. But um, the alternative is just to uh, just to energize it really briefly and, and rotate the wheels by 90 degrees and then we can get the bits that we've missed because the coupling rods are in the way so this is just the humbrol dark earth and we're just using that for these um, horizontal services so on the walkways so they're going to be built up with uh, they're going to be a bit dirty aren't they I guess You can see once you get a bit on the it's on the roof in the wrong place. Didn't really want it there. Um, they're quite difficult to remove, so uh, I think all we can do is disguise that a little bit with some extra powders up there. Again, the leading edges. We'll um, put an extra bit in there. Again, working on the on the bottom of these buffer beams. Um, are they still good buffer beams when they're on a on a big shunter like this? I guess they still are, but um, they seem to have a different sort of purpose on these because they seem to protect it. But anyway, um, I'm sure someone knows what they're called. Uh, so, coat of uh, polyurethane varnish. Uh, this is again the Vallejo one, as you know. That's what we always use. Um, trying to stay away from the wheels too much that still needs protection but I don't want to put too much on there because it just means more to clean off but um, we need some on there so uh, we'll be as careful as we can and our final piece is some uh, some grease we can just use on the bot on the end of the buffers, um, just to uh, just to make them. You can see they're just a really light touch there. Don't want too much on there. Whatever you think is is correct. Some of these are totally dry. Some are just caked in the 
in grease so uh, this is quite nice this dries in a gloss so that's why I put it on after the um, after the varnish which is obviously a matte varnish and then again going back to these filler caps which I seem to be obsessed with um, just a touch of the grease there we're just going to dot it in we'll let it run naturally and spread out as grease would normally be and pretty much that's done so we need to clean these off so the wheels didn't rotate much so we're just going to clean this bottom surface and um, once we've got it going later on I'll put it on the rolling road and we'll give it a, a sort of full clean you can see that some of the paint is coming off so there's obviously something on there and that's it we're done that's how it looked when we started and that's uh, how it looks now so I hope you enjoyed this video um, good of you to join me once again thanks for your comments if you have any new comments obviously great leave them down below and we'll see you in the next uh, video which is coming up really soon thank you again for your time you have a, a nice evening